Right, okay, so if you look this way, what we're going to do now is I'll just make it move um, across the screen. The code that I'm using in this, we are going to change later on down the line, about two more files down the line. So save that as like um, bubble one or basically you're going to be saving versions. After each stopping point, I want you to save a version so you've got different test files. So that when you've forgotten how this all works, you can come back to point one and work your way through and kind of figure it out for yourselves. So I'll save this as, um, and I'll create a folder. I'll call this folder bubble game. In that folder, I'll just call this um, S file one or something. So you're going to be using save as a lot. And what happens when you use save as is it opens up a new window every time. So by the end of this, you'll have like a load of files open at once. But you can close the versions down you've used before if you want. Okay, so currently we've added a circle to the stage um, dynamically. What that means is we've not done it. When you do it in the design mode, it's almost like you're doing it with your hands putting it on. But now we're doing it by magic. It's the easiest way to explain it. It's magic. Well, once I've created C1, I can refer to that instance name, kind of. Um, when I create it, at least. And I want to tell C1 to listen to, for something. Now, if we were using um, movie clips, rather than our own classes, it would be, we'd get a little bit more hinting. So, Johnny, you need to pay attention to these bits here. The rule is, the word starts with a small letter, and then every new word starts with a capital letter. So it's what's known as camel case. And lots of people, well, pretty much everybody, from level two through to level six, struggle with this. So after a bracket, we then tell it what type of thing we're listening for. In this case, something we've not used before, I don't think. We're listening for a type of event. And this event is just like a, a library of stuff. What I want to listen for is enter frame. All capitals for this one with an underscore and then a comma. And after it, I tell it what I want it to do. Um, and what I'm going to do is this is a kind of shorthand way of doing it. Um, and then once we've done this way, a couple of revisions, we're going to change it to the more formalized way. So I'm going to put function, bracket, bracket. And in that bracket, I'm going to put E, an event. That's how I get this drop down list. With this drop down list, when it starts showing the word I want, press return. Let the drop down list do the work for you because then you won't make as many mistakes. So I press return rather than typing it out and it says event. Then I'm going to put a curly bracket in and press return. When I press return, it'll put another one in for me. So let's just um, try and make this a bit bigger. Just about squeeze it on. So you'll notice there, that's a curly brace. Once I press return after that, it puts this one in for me. So there's some bits and pieces where Flash does it, well, Animate does it for you. After that curly brace, because of the way that I've done this, I need to put a normal bracket, normal brace, also known as parentheses and the semicolon. And then I'm just going to tell it what I want it to do. What I want to do is to make it c1.x plus equals 5. And I'm going to change the value of x to 0 at this, when I created it. 
you have a go at that and test it and see what happens. Two ticks while I just stop. 